Radio Free Edgemouth Episode 40 uh, What's this then? 40, 48? No, 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 it's 49 Wait a minute Neo Wagnerian light motifs. Hey, 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 check this part out coming up. It's pretty cool. Watch this. I told you this part was cool. <laughs> I'm not a financially responsible person. Arthur Schopenhauer. Yeah! I didn't pay my taxes! Well, a special little guy on that, uh, that their social media platform requested an Amon Amarth episode this week, so that's what we're doing, motherfucker! So, Amon Amarth is a Swedish death metal band that emerged in the mid-90s out of the ashes of another band called Scum, and they also had bad members from Acanorous Quintet, who, uh... Acanorous Quintet, I'll probably do an episode on someday. I like them a lot. Amon Amarth, I'm not huge on, but I... They were big for me when I was, uh, when I was a tander little jub, and I still enjoy their first album quite a bit. So these guys brought two major kind of innovations in g guitar technique to Swedish melodic death metal. The first was this sort of weird stomp along kind of almost polka-ish riff that goes a little something like this. So you get that kind of very pronounced up and down strokes type of polka shit going on. Pretty easy to see what that's about. And then you alternate different kinds of drum beats over it. Always gets a crowd going. A lot of people don't realize that this technique actually arose naturally out of a succession of Swedish death metal bands before Amon Amarth kind of made the uh, ultimate form of it. The initial version of this riff can be heard in stuff like this member in Entombed where they have very low tuned guitars with very loose strings that they can kind of make sort of burp a little bit in a weird way. It's hard to describe but you'll know it when you hear it. This kind of shit right here. This is off of Dismember's second album, Dreaming in Red. Or the song's called Dreaming in Red. The album's called Indecent and Obscene. Well, there we go. The initial step in the evolutionary chain of the Swedish gore polka. After that, we have uh, melodic death metal bands like In Flames taking that concept and injecting a little bit more folk music into it. This is off of Subterranean, the second in Flames album. The song is also called Subterranean. And here comes Zapolka. So that's a little bit closer to uh, what you would hear Amon Amarth doing. Amon Amarth took this idea and then brought in a little bit more of that older death metal grit to beef it back up and give us songs like Victorious March and that end section of Without Fear that I played for you earlier. The other big melodic innovation coming from Amon Amarth was a particular way of layering guitar tracks where there's one very clear obvious melody that's tremolo picked and very drawn out and under that you're gonna have usually a more progressive progressive the percussive melody and then even under that you're gonna have a guitar basically just hitting an open chord to make it a bit beefier and nastier so it's almost sort of like a guitar orchestra you can hear that in the uh, intro to the song without fear so here's that uh, tremolo picked melody type stuff nice bass sound on this album really good drums because this album and only this one has Martin Lopez on it, who later joined Opeth. Really good drummer. And there's that tremolo picked over the super heavy, simple riff type thing going on, that layering. You got the melody up top. 
and then under it you got so there's like three layers of melody there and then we get into bar chords being hit with that uh, melody soaring over the top of it so that way of layering melodies in particular is something that Amon Amarth perfected and rode the superstardom because surprisingly enough, Brian Slagle go, 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 of uh, Metal Blade Records said that Amon Amarth is the top selling band on that label of all time, beating out even Cannibal Corpse, which I am very happy about because, you know, Cannibal Corpse is like whatever. You know, they're not quite the intellectual heavyweights that a band like Deicide are. But also from a, uh, a movement standpoint, it's encouraging to see that there's a lot of people into Amon Amarth because they got the whole unabashed Viking Volkish thing going on. They never really get too overly political, but I'm sure that our handlers don't really want to see a lot of people running around with ancient Germanic and Celtic symbology. Pretty effective gateway drug into far-right politics and general racial awareness and such. And I think they might have gotten in trouble a couple times over that. They, you know, they got that music video for, I think, with Odin on our side. They're, like, rolling a big Celtic cross around on fire. It's like, uh-oh, you can't do that! Womp womp. So it exposed the new generation of kids to kind of Volkish thought. And they're very good gym music. So, do I like them on Amarth? Yeah, they're, they're pretty dope. I mostly just like their first album, maybe some stuff off the second one. Uh, there's a song on the fourth one called We're Silent Gods Stand Guard that I still use as a gym track fairly often later on in their career they moved more towards being just kind of like a power metal band with death metal vocals with very predictable songwriting but early on especially on that first album there's a lot of odd twists and turns that betray their death metal origins and even a little bit of black metal so with that we're going to listen to some more technically minded compositionally devious stuff from Amon Amarth. This is the first track off the first album. It's called Ride for Vengeance. Hey guys, I bet he's gonna yell in a minute. Oh wow. So we have very black metal tremolo riffs leading into a more typical, uniquely Amon Amarth type thing. Lots of little melodic arabesques connecting the power chords. Johan Haig's a really good vocalist. You can never take that away from him. And so we've had a pretty standard melodic development right here of a one two three punch of that intro into the thrashy part and then this melodic tremolo picks part with that guitar layering i mentioned earlier so normally after this part you would go into a slower more melodic part which they do do later on but at this point they were still mostly a death metal band so you're going to get an unexpected transition in a more dissonant death metal right around here Like, holy shit, this is a malevolent creation riff or something. Fucking dope. And now we are back into the melodic stuff. To go into what would normally be the uh, part four of the one, two, three, four part cycle of the Monomarth composition despite that death metal digression. Yeah! That's that good shit, my brother. And that's why I think they're pretty fucking dope. And I hope you do too. Later, queers. 